In the previous video, we saw Fan Mo be given the opportunity to train at the Sacred Spring due to his exceptional powers. However, his time at the Sacred Spring was cut short by a calamity-level monster attack on Bao City orchestrated by the evil cult Black Curia to gain control over the Sacred Spring. He helped his classmates reach the city's safety barrier, all while hiding the vial containing the Sacred Spring. One of the outpost investigators, Yang Bai, who tried to take the vial from him, turned out to be a traitor who works for Black Curia. In order to prevent him from getting the Sacred Spring, Fan Mo drank the entire contents of the vial. After defeating Yang Bai, he set out to look for his sister Xinxia, who was still not inside the safety barrier. While trying to save her, he had run into Ang Yu, who also revealed himself to be a part of Black Curia. Desperate to protect Xinxia from all the monsters summoned by Ang, Fan Mo unlocked his nebula stage, growing his spiritual space from 7 stars to 49 stars, increasing his power manifold. With his newfound power, he was able to cast a star chart level fire spell and save his sister. He also helped the military and monster hunters seal the hole through which all the monsters were infiltrating the city. Finally, the leader of the outpost investigators, Kong Zhan, displayed his OP powers while taking down the giant Pyrolicus monster and ending the disaster once and for all. Despite their efforts, the monster attack completely ravaged Bo City, making it uninhabitable and overrun by Black Curia members. Fan Mo and his family moved to Mingzhu City, the capital of magic, to start a new life. On the bullet train there, he comes across a history professor from Mingzhu University, the most prestigious university a mage can attend, who tells Fan Mo he doesn't have what it takes to get admission there. After getting roasted, he makes it his goal to join an organization to earn money for his family and get his second awakening to Star Chart so that he can enter the university someday. Similarly, Stinxia will homeschool herself to prepare for the Mage Aptitude Test next year. Once they arrive, they settle into a small apartment given by Mingzhu City to Bao City refugees. Fan Mo practices aligning his nebula's 49 stars but fails like always. He has a long way to go before he can master aligning them all and further arranging them into a star chart. Shortly after, he receives a call from his teacher, Miss Tang, who asks him to meet her in a town called Xishui. He makes the trip there, and they meet to discuss things over tea. Miss Tang reveals that she is a part of the Holy Court of the Association of Magical Societies, a law enforcement organization that arrests and punishes mages who break the law. The organization anticipated Black Curia's attack on Bao City, but did not expect it to be so well coordinated. She failed in her attempt at arresting a Black Curia hotshot named Saling, a case among many others that the higher-ups have now taken up to ensure justice is served to Bao City. Presently, she has been sent by the Holy Court to investigate the sudden disappearance of all the water in Tissue Town, and she suspects a mage named Chao He the Butcher to be behind this. Sure, I'd suspect him too with that kind of name. Since her identity is known, she asks Fan Mo, a fresh face, to tell Chao He who is moving around town with the most suspicious all-black fit. In return, she'll help him awaken his shadow talent after the job is done. With the promise of a new talent, Fan Mo happily accepts her request. The suspect makes his way upstream of the dried-up river that normally flows through the town with Fan Mo hot on his trail. Miss Tang accompanies him using the power of invisibility, a neat trick of the shadow talent. She hears a group of people closing in, grabs Fan Mo, and makes him hide behind a tree stump. They hear this group of hunters lead led by a man named Shang Pan talk about catching a fire spirit. Once they walk further ahead, Miss Tang explains that spirits are sentient embers of an element that give tremendous powers to those who possess it. Some people are born with spirits, making them naturally gifted mages like Ning Su Mu. Considering this drought has reached such an extreme stage in a matter of days, it must have been caused by a fire spirit, which this group is trying to hunt since spirits are sold for upward of 20 million. They eventually reach a dam where they see the hunters Lee being confronted by another group identifying as the Dongfang family but their main target, Chao Yi, is nowhere to be seen. Zhang Dongfeng threatens Shang Pan and his men to back off if they don't want to end up on the streets, but the hunters don't comply. A fight breaks out when the Dongfeng boys hit them with nebula-level fire spells, but the hunters Li counters with star chart defensive spells. Despite being overmatched technically, the Dongfeng unit persists and defeats the hunters Li who run away from the scene. However, before they can get back to work, they're faced with another challenger. Jun also threatens him, but the man removes his cap to reveal a scar on his forehead. The guys immediately recognize him as Chao He, and fear creeps onto their faces. He lets out an evil laugh while casting a spin web spell that conjures a giant spider from thin air. Realizing he has Sarchart level hex talent, the Dongfangs make a run for it, but get caught up in the spider's web. The spider subdues them by invading their mind, making it impossible for them to escape from their death inside tightly bound cocoons. Chao, he walks for a huge crack in the ground from which steam is coming out. 
When he gets close to it, bright purple flames erupt from the crack, revealing that it is a Fushia fire spirit, which is even rarer and stronger than the usual red fire spirit. He laughs maniacally as he walks into the flames to try and absorb its power. Miss Tang tells Famo to stay back while she stops him. She casts star chart level shadow magic to summon a shadow spike and place him under arrest. Of course, he doesn't take it lying down. He surrounds them with a black dome and asks her if she's thirsty. Suddenly, Miss Tang is overcome with weakness, and her knees buckle down. He reveals that he laced the food she ate at the restaurant. He knows the holy court sent her to arrest him under the suspicion that he knows about the making of Black Curia's Spring of Rage, which caused the disaster in Bao City. She quickly gathers her strength and gets back up, casting a super-powerful Phoenix Blaze spell that should have burned him to ashes. However, he is able to survive the attack because of his magical armor, which takes the blow but gets destroyed in the process. He takes her down with his hex magic, which makes her lose consciousness. Seeing this, Fan Mo transforms into his cute mage costume and attacks Chao He with his fire talent, but it's too weak to even land a scratch on him. Fan Mo tries to negotiate, saying he will let Chao He take the fire spirit and return for Miss Tang's life and possession of the Dongfang's items. Thinking he's a bad guy too, Chao agrees to the deal. In reality, Fan Mo was just stalling for time until he could align a star chart in his thunder talent. When it's ready, Fan Mo hits Chao He with a massive lightning bolt which leaves behind only one of his rings as a trace of his existence. Miss Tang asks Fan Mo to refine the fire spirit before it disappears. She feels guilty for putting her student in so much danger, but he only got away from with luck. He walks into the flames like Chao He did and feels pure power course through him. After absorbing the spirit, he helps Miss Tang return to town. Noticing the ring left behind by Chao He, she frantically picks it up to give it to the higher court as evidence. On the cab ride back, she explains that the fire spirit he absorbed will give him resistance to fire magic unless cast by a fire spirit on a higher level than his own. He asks her about the ring, to which she answers that the high court believes the spirit of rage was made by a rogue pharmacist. Chao He, a suspected link, was supposed to be arrested for questioning, but now that he's dead, the ring is the only hope of giving them some leads. Later that night, Fan Mo returns to Mingzhu City. Miss Tang drops him a message, thanking him for his help and following through on her promise to help awaken Shadow Talent. She books an appointment for his second awakening at the Association of Magic Societies. The Association's base is a grand skyscraper located in Mingzhu City. He is led to the awakening chamber by a receptionist. The guide for his second awakening is a cranky old man who looks down upon Fan Mo as a rich brat who thinks he's entitled to get the Thunder Talent. He condescendingly tells Fan Mo that there is no guarantee and that he will only get Thunder Talent if he is destined to. To his surprise, Fan Mo says he is interested in the Shadow Talent instead. The guide's assistant brings forth a crystal ball that's meant to increase his chance of getting the Shadow Talent, after which she and the guide leave the room. Fan Mo reaches his hands over the ball and focuses within his spiritual realm. The ball fills with darkness, signifying the successful awakening of Shadow Talent. The darkness is soon engulfed by a bright white light, but Fan Mo doesn't know what it means. The guy comes to check on him and congratulates him for unlocking what he calls the summoning talent. Stoked about unlocking two more talents, Fan Mo thanks the guide and the assistant. The guy shades him again by saying those talents won't mean anything if he doesn't work hard, and he has a lot to catch up on considering his age. This confuses Fan Mo because he's only a high school student but brushes it off and leaves. A much older man comes after him for his awakening appointment. The guide assumes he is the Star Chart level mage that Miss Tang had sent for his second awakening. But the receptionist points out it was actually Fan Mo. The guide is left baffled, wondering how such a young guy could unlock four talents in total and reach Star Chart. Well, that's Fan Mo for you. Fan Mo returns home to see his dear sister Xinxia peacefully meditating on her own. He thinks back to his promise of giving her wings to fly with if she's never able to use her legs again. That dream seems more possible now than ever because of his four talents. He hopes to get her some magical gear that acts as wings for her. With many things to look forward to, he trains vigorously and practices mastering his star chart for six months before the Mingzhu University entrance exam. However, time flies and he fails his first attempt. He continues training and plans on giving it a second attempt. This time, he doesn't plan on telling the university about his different talents. A university as prestigious as Mingzhu University, Possessing thunder talent isn't enough to make the cut. He wants to emphasize his summoning talent, which is at level 3, in the hopes that the university will make an exception and take him in. On the day of the entrance exam, he requests an interview instead of the standard practical test. The interview panel recognizes his value as a candidate with his summoning talent but are skeptical because he has never cast a summoning spell before 
and there are more promising candidates and other talents, such as a particularly skilled Earth mage at Star Trek level. Fan Mo tries to convince them to consider him, and the interviewers give him a week to prepare for a test to demonstrate his ability to align the seven stars in his summoning stardust. During that time, he enlists the help of Miss Tang, who coaches him through the process of a technique called dimensional summoning of beast, in which his consciousness roams in another dimension to look for a nearby beast it can summon. The day of the test finally arrives, and the same panel sits down to examine him. Lu Song, the star chart level Earth Mage, also attends the demonstration with his butler because he is annoyed over some nobody with a summoning talent upstaging him. Just like he had practiced, Fan Mo concentrates his mind and transfers his consciousness to another dimension filled with beasts. Traversing the dimension is tough and requires a super strong will to summon a strong beast. In the distance, he hears a howl that belongs to a majestic blue arc wolf with yellow patterns. He chooses the wolf in a heartbeat. He goes up to the hill where the archwolf is resting and sneaks up on it with a rope. He flings the noose end on its neck to try and capture it, but the wolf doesn't take this kindly and starts chasing him. The effort takes a huge toll on his mind, causing his body in the real world to collapse and start coughing up blood. One of the examiners advises him not to expend energy on taking the beast by force. Fan Mo discards the rope and sits down near the wolf. This doesn't seem to offend the wolf, and it lowers its guard. He meditates and forms a magic circle, which he slowly puts over the archwolf's head. He will have finished the summoning if he places the circle completely over the beast. Luckily, he is successful in doing so, and the wolf lets him pet its head. A red symbol appears on its head, marking it as his summoned beast. The archwolf appears in the real world next to Fanmo, absolutely shocking the examiners who weren't expecting much from him. Infuriated, Lu Song goes to fight the archwolf to prove that the beast is just a glorified pet. Lu puts up a good defense with his earth magic, but the wolf bypasses all of them, forcing him to run to safety. He pulls out his trump card, revealing he is a Star Trek level ice mage and chaining up the wolf with strong ice chains. He has no mercy and is about to kill the wolf when the examiners notice Fan Mo's eyes glowing purple. They run up to him and beg him to stop, but Fan Mo swears he will finish Lu off with Nebula Thunder if he hurts the wolf. Lu makes the smart decision to surrender and is promptly escorted out by his butler. The examiners accept Fan Mo as a student in the university's summing department. Likewise, his sister Xingxia gets admission into an institution in Song City. On his first day of classes, he walks in to see only seven students, all of them being guys. The teacher casually walks in and tells them that the summing department doesn't teach anything as most conventional faculties do. The students are free to attend classes from other departments. The only pressing matter for the summoning students is the welcome party tradition, from which the best two students are awarded a vial of blood of brute, which enables one's summoning beast to undergo metamorphosis and gives a huge boost in its strength. Later that day, Fan Mo settles into his dorm room, which he shares with several other students. One is Manyan Zhao, who is majoring in light talent, and another is Ping Wuzhang. The two wish him luck for the welcome party because apparently the tradition is that all the new students demonstrate their power by inflicting it on the summoning beasts and the summoning talent students, so they call PETA. The demonstration goes both ways because it is also an opportunity for the summoning talent students to show their beast's strength. On the day of the welcome party, Mangan tells Fan Mo that the other six students in the department live in the same dorm and have been practicing with each other for a long time. For some reason, Fan Mo is the only one who wasn't invited. He doesn't care much because his archwolf is plenty strong and way. However, he suddenly feels a stabbing pain in his head and runs toward the forest in search of his wolf. He finds it in the midst of an intense fight with another summoning beast. The wolf wards the giant bird away, but not before it's badly wounded all over its body. Fan Mo transfers some of the pendant's magical energy to help it heal, but it is in no condition to stand a chance of winning the blood of Brute. All the students gather at the stadium bleachers and cheer as the summoning talent students enter the arena. Dafu Hai, who appears to be the department's favorite, volunteers to go first. A bunch of students choose to face his beast, and Dafu challenges them to try and take it down together. They confidently rise to the occasion but seem to change their minds when a gargantuan skeleton of the scorpion-looking beast called White Armored Wings appears out of the ground. The monster chases them and flicks them away one by one. One of the teachers steps in to protect the students from dying by trapping one of its claws under a boulder. The light talent student climbs up the boulder and uses blinding radiance to blind the beast, but it only further aggravates it causing it to break free and throw the student across the arena. You see, white armored wings have poor eyesight to begin with. A thunder talent student tries to electrocute it, but the beast withstands the shock and proceeds to whip its sting toward the students. Like that, the beast withstands three rounds of challengers, but it's starting to lose its energy. 
In the fourth round, it gets overwhelmed by several attacks and perishes. One of the summoning talent students, Wang Li Tang, considers this a good thing because it means there are now five students in the running for Blood of Brute. One of the other students tries to shut down his bad attitude, but Wang tells him to go and fight if he's so cool. The guy is too scared to fight, so he asks Fan Mo to go next instead, but Fan Mo firmly denies his request because his beast is injured. Thus, the poor guy is forced into the arena. He trembles as he summons his beast, which turns out to be just a cute little pup. Everybody laughs at him as they tease the puppy. He returns to the group and apologizes for being weak. One of the other summoning talent students, the handsome and talented Zheng Bingxiao, comforts him and offers to go the next round. He confidently walks into the arena and summons a giant stone golem that towers over all the students. None of the talents have any effect on it for a long time, and it defeats 25 students before cracks eventually start showing up on its body. Not wanting to risk the safety of his beast, Zheng surrenders from the competition. Next, the cocky student summons his bone-eating ghoul, a beast even more ferocious than the stone golem. He climbs onto its back and flies around the stadium, challenging students to face his summoning beast. Lu Song finds out that the summoning department has a quota to defeat at least 100 students, failing which their resources will be given to other departments. Intending to snatch all the resources for the Earth Department, Lu steps up to the challenge. The bone-eating ghoul soars directly toward him, but Lu makes a surprise attack with his ice talent and chains it up. The goal disappears as soon as it appeared, leading the summoning students to panic and everyone else to gain confidence. All the remaining students flood into the arena to fight Fan Mo's beast because surely whatever summoning beast he has can't be stronger than the bone-eating ghoul, and that threat has already been defeated. The teacher tells Fan Mo not to go through with the challenge, but he feels a gust of wind on his face and realizes his art wolf has awoken. He boldly walks up to the students and summons the art wolf. It lets out a roar that forms wind currents strong enough to topple the students. One of the students takes the lead and tells other students, each with a different talent, to surround the wolf. The wind talent student tries to use his speed to pin it down while the level 3 water talent student protects him with a barrier, but the wolf's claws are strong enough to penetrate the shield and wound the wind student. He even gets away from a lightning bolt attack without a scratch. It retaliates by letting out a deafening roar that causes a thunderstorm and a tornado to form in the middle of the arena. The leader casts the earth spell, wave plane, to push the fire and thunder students away from the twister and fuse it. The water student can't use her magic anymore, so he protects them with a wall of vine. After that, Fan Mo tells his archwolf to stand back. He questions Chancellor Xiao over the fairness of the welcome party tradition. Why must they lose their resources if they don't meet the 100 defeated quota, but only stand to win back their resources by meeting the quota? The Chancellor laughs and reveals that there is a hidden condition to the quota. If a summoning department can withstand 200 students' magic, they will be granted all the training resources of the university for this semester. Upon hearing that, Fan Mo basically wages war against the entire school. His brazen confidence rubs people the wrong way and many students jump at the opportunity to take him down. Unfortunately for them, the Archwolf is way too badass for them to beat. Finally, Lifing Zhuang, a kid from a powerful noble family, enters the arena. His wind attack is very strong, but it still isn't enough to defeat the wolf. It diverts its attention on the other students and nearly pounces on one of the fire talent mages, but is stopped by magical vines that grab its legs. Turns out Lifing is also gifted in the body talent, but is nowhere strong enough to hold the Archwolf for long. This time, he goes for Fan Mo directly instead of the Archwolf, but Fan Mo knocks him out with a Thunder Talent spell. Everyone stares in disbelief when they realize that he not only has an intermediate level Archwolf, but is also a Thunder Mage. Fan Mo eggs them on so that they attack and then single handedly takes them down with his Thunder Magic. Thanks to him, the summoning department defeats 150 mages in no time and are on track to defeating 200. Kang Feng Bai, the youngest student in the university to achieve star chart level magic, watches this scene from the best seats. He decides it's finally time to step in and defend the honor of the Bai family, the greatest family in Mingzhu City, at least according to him. Embarrassingly, he has to be protected from one of Fan Mo's thunder attacks before he can even cast a single spell. The teacher disqualifies him from participating and kicks him out of the arena when he refuses to listen. A hush falls over the stadium when 199 students have been defeated. Who will be his last opponent? Finally, a girl with long scarlet red hair walks up to him. She is Nujiao Mu, the school's most popular mage. She uses the Star Trek level Twister spell, which produces wind currents so strong that Fan Mo gets swept away. He climbs on the Archwolf's back and tells it to go where the wind isn't so strong but Fan Mo falls off its back, and the wolf gets lifted by the twister. She shows mercy by not killing the Arc Wolf and asks Fan Mo to show his true powers. 
He tells the wolf to return to his dimension and rest and launches a lightning bolt attack that she dodges. She traps him inside with Bonnie Talon's forest prison spell, causing everyone to cheer for her glorious victory. She opens a slit and tells him to concede defeat, but is surprised to see no one inside. He suddenly appears behind her and zaps her with the thunder element. She never anticipated him to have the shadow talent and concedes defeat. Having defeated 200 students, the chancellor announces the end of the welcome competition and officially rewards all the university's training resources to the summoning department for the semester. The next day, Fan Mo walks into his dorm to see empty bunk beds. Mangan points out that his display of strength created many enemies. Nobody wants to sleep next to the person they consider a thief. Moreover, Nujio took responsibility for the whole competition and generously donated tons of resources to the student body to make up for the ones lost. Mannion explains that this is a very calculative move to win the student's favor for the noble Mu family, since it is common practice for such noble families to recruit as many talented mages as they can from universities. Pingu asks him how he escaped from Nujio's forest prison but Fanmo keeps his shadow talent a secret. A few days later, the Chancellor calls Fanmo to the library and tries to get him to admit that he has the shadow talent, but after he refuses to disclose it, the Chancellor drops the matter and changes the subject to Fanmo's rewards for his performance in the competition. He shows him a variety of high-quality magical gear that he can choose from. He chooses the Boots of the Beast, a magical gear that gives him running abilities like the Flash. He also earns one chance to go train at the Three-Step Pagoda, a sacred magical ground like the Sacred Spring. The Chancellor advises him to save this rare chance for later, as going in his current level will reap minimum benefits. Finally, he gives Fan Moa's scholarship card amounting to 2 million yuan. He transfers most of the money to his dad's account, telling him to find a good house in the city and also to arrange a nanny for Xingxia, who is living alone in Song City. Later that day, he tries to apply for a job in the city's Hunters League, but is far too unqualified for the position. He needs to be an elite hunter, but his experience with the monster hunters in Bao City only makes him a level 2 hunter or a novice hunter. In other words, the assistant at the front desk tips him off about a private hunter club where he will have a better chance at scoring a gig. He goes to the address for King T and Hunter Club for an interview, but a little girl sitting outside the office's main door turns him away, saying he's too young. Sounds pretty rough coming from a 12-year-old girl. At the same time, a well-dressed lady who looks like she comes from money walks toward the building. Hopeful for a new client, the kid changes her tune and graciously welcomes her inside. Fan Mo doesn't want his trip to come to waste and enters too. The little girl's grandfather attentively listens to the lady's troubles while she breaks down crying. She suspects her husband is a monster who kills people at night because she noticed blood splattered over his clothes while doing the laundry. Fan Mo gets hooked on her story and is eager to get her help but the old man and the little girl turn her case away despite the wad of cash she offers them. Furious, the lady tells them it's their fault if anything happens to her family and storms off. Fan Mo questions why they didn't help the poor woman, to which the old man shows him a contract. The contract describes a similar situation and bears the same address as the woman's. The old man says this contract is with this lady's husband, but his story claims she's the midnight murderer. He hires Fan Mo and gives him the case. No matter who the actual murderer is, his primary duty is to protect the child. He is shocked to learn that the little girl, who will be his partner in this case, is a master hunter. The old man introduces himself as the president of the King Tian Hunter Club and says that Fan Mo should call him Old Bao. The little girl's name is Ling. The next day, Fan Mo arrives at their designated meeting spot to find Ling already waiting there. She shows him CCTV footage from cameras she somehow planted all over the culprit's house. Let's not think too hard about all the laws she's breaking. Ling thinks back to the time when the lady came to tell them about her husband. She claimed to have come immediately after finding the blood on his clothes, but she somehow had a full face of perfect makeup. The lady goes to take a shower, but Ling notices her leave behind what looks like a body-length skin costume. This confirms their suspicions that it's the woman who's the monster. Ling has a clue about the type of monster she is, and that type particularly likes their victims to be young women mages. Fan Mo quickly gets the information on the residents of the building and finds only six residents fitting that description. The closest one to the lady's house is an apartment rented out by three girls. He frantically knocks at their door and barges in to check on everyone. Everything seems to be ordinary until one of the girls gets thrown into the room they're in through a closed door. He tells the girl with him to stay silent and peeks through the doorframe to see the third girl hanging on a chandelier all bloodied up. The monster sits atop her and stares back at them with glowing red eyes. Fan Mo prepares to cast a fire spell, but the girl behind him faints, causing him to lose focus. The monster uses the opportunity to break through the window and escape. 
He uses his shatter shift ability to teleport outside the building and follows the monster. However, his chase is cut short by Ling, who calls him to tell him that the husband is also shedding his skin. She tells him to leave the lady monster for now and go to their apartment to protect the child, who will most definitely die once the husband completely sheds his skin. Fadmo sneaks into the room with Shadow Shift and attacks the monster with Roaring Thunder. It doesn't have any effect on him, but at least it diverts his attention from the baby. Fadmo grabs the baby, but realizes even the female monster has come. Fighting them both will be a difficult task, so he equips his boots of beasts and yeets out of there with the child. The monster couple follows him. But he unleashes Fushy a Fiery Fist, which casts a Firestorm twice as powerful as usual Nebula-level fire magic. He checks on the three girls, but they're not in their apartment. He guesses the girl that was uninjured took them to the hospital. He goes to the rooftop, where Ling is to see the male monster gravely injured but now with human skin. Ling guesses the female monster used his body to protect herself from the fiery fist and escaped unhurt. She explains that the man is the scaly beast, a type of monster parasite that lives inside a human body and drinks their host's blood. If the parasite is caught early, the host may recover. With that hope, they call the ambulance for help. His first case for the hunter club takes such a heavy toll on him that he sleeps for two days straight. After waking up, he unlocks the nebula stage and his shadow talent as well. Later that day, he meets up with Ling, who tells him that the husband has offered to pay 1 million yuan if they can bring his wife back to normal. Luckily, Ling has special equipment that can track down any monster if you enter its blood data. Once it's sundown, a red dot should appear on the screen, showing the monster's location when it comes out to eat. To their surprise, hundreds of red dots appear around the city at once, all approaching closer and closer to their location. Ling realizes that the parasitic monster must have somehow multiplied and spread throughout the city. Fanimo thinks that the monster didn't attack the three girls to kill them, but instead make them its hosts too. All the monsters seem to be approaching the school and most students are concentrated in the gymnasium because there's a concert. They try to stop students from entering, but nobody listens to them. Even more concerning is the fact that there are six dots inside the stadium. They decide to split up with fan mode dealing with the infected in the gymnasium while Ling calls the hunters Lee and other authorities for reinforcements. She advises him to make a cut in the infected's thumb to allow the parasite to come out through the blood. However, in more severe cases, he will need to kill the parasite inside their bodies to allow the human host to recover. She hands him a Bluetooth device before he rushes into the crowded stadium. She alerts him that one of the monsters is right next to him, but he can't see any until he is ambushed by it from the top. He kills it easily with his fushy of fire powers and peels the dead monster's skin off to reveal the human girl, who thankfully survives. After making sure she's alright, he rushes off to deal with the next one. Lane informs him that she has already contacted the Hunters League and advises him to leave the rest of them because this is way above their pay grade, but he insists on knowing the location of the next monster. He finds the next scaly beast preying on a girl inside the women's restrooms. He burns it and saves the human girl before it's too late. Ling tells him to make a slit in her thumb. When he does, a maggot-like creature falls out and dies. The girl's slit heals immediately since she's a healing mage. He asks her to heal the girl the monster attacked once she's recovered and leaves. Eventually, he is surrounded by scaly beasts from all sides. He dashes into a locker room with his boots of beasts and lures them in to attack them with fushy heavenly fire. After saving them all, he gets chased by another horde of monsters. At the same time, he gets a call from Mannion, who just killed one of the monsters, and tells him to come inside the same room. He barely makes it before shutting the door behind him to block the six monsters chasing him. They discuss their plan of action against the monsters. Most of Fanmo's magic is too powerful and could kill the girl hosts. Mannion's girlfriend, who is also in the room, suggests he use his light magic like he did with the monster he killed because it seems they are vulnerable to light. Meanwhile, the hunter's Lee finally arrives outside the gymnasium and assesses the situation. After doing some digging, they find out that parasitic scaly beasts are not infectious, but for some reason, one of them has undergone some mutation that allowed it to spread into other hosts. The parasite with the original infectious mutation controls the other parasites as scaly queen. These scaly beast minions will give up their life if they think they don't stand a chance and give their remaining energy to the scaly queen. In the process, the human host inside also dies. To make things worse, the scaly queen seems intelligent, unlike the other scaly beasts. Due to this, the Hunter's League can't hastily rush into the scene. Soon, the monsters break into the room that Fan Mo and the others are in. Sure enough, Manian's light magic is very effective at purging the parasites and freeing the hosts. When too many monsters come in at once, his girlfriend freezes the entire room, causing the monsters to turn into popsicles and he eliminates them with light. Suddenly, they hear a rumbling in the distance. 
Lane tells Fanmo over the earpiece that the University and Hunters League have decided to shut everybody inside the gymnasium to quarantine them and prevent the infection from spreading in the city. Of course, this is a horrible plan because it would mean the death of over 5,000 students inside the gymnasium. The school authorities especially push for another course of action because they will be held responsible for the deaths of so many students. However, there's no way to enter without alerting the scaly beasts and queen, which would risk a mass death of the hosts. At this point, Ling rushes into the discussion and shares her belief that the scaly queen is also inside the gymnasium. Her hunch is that the scaly queen is in or near the stage lift on the third floor because the scaly beasts around that area have unusual movements and aren't leaving the area to look for people to infect. However, the problem of entering the building without detection still remains. Finally, they decide to contact Fan Mo, who is already inside, to defeat the Skelly Queen. Of course, he is smart and demands an award from the school if he succeeds. Without a range for, Fan Mo and Mannion run up the stairs to reach the stage lift on the third floor. Right before they reach, Fan Mo tells Mannion not to push himself too hard since his light magic won't be as effective on the stronger monsters. He could leave the more tough ones for Fan Mo because it's not worth risking his life. Mannion says he shouldn't worry and admits he doesn't intend to sacrifice his life and will run away if things don't look good. His only motive is to gain some fame from his heroics because he belongs to the noble Zhao family and fame is their most important currency. At least he's honest. On the other hand, Fan Mo doesn't care about fame. After all, he's already hated by most of the school because of his display of power in the welcome competition. He arranges a deal with Mannion that if they succeed in this operation, Mannion will get all the credit for it if he gives him a soul thunder seed a type of magical gear. He tries his luck to ask for a winged magic tool for his sister, but that stuff's too expensive. Mannion advises him to take part in the Hunter's Game competition, which takes place every four years, because winning it might be the only plausible way for him to get the wings. They reach the third floor where Mannion takes care of the first round of patrolling monsters while Fanmo slips past with his shadow talent. He reaches the area of the stage lift, where the main star of the day is getting ready to make her grand entrance. She enters the stage lift with a mechanic to help her descend safely, but Fanmo has a funny feeling about the mechanic and follows them with his shadow magic. With the concert still in full swing, thousands of students can be heard cheering for their favorite singer as the lift goes down the shaft. The mechanic reveals her true identity as the scaly queen, making the singer faint. The audience's cheering turns to screaming when the scaly beasts come on stage. Fan Mo emerges from his shadows and shows himself to the Skelly Queen, who immediately climbs upward to keep some distance. He makes a bone shield around him, but she breaks it with just a few hits, indicating that she's grown much stronger than the last time. His fiery hiss spell also doesn't do much damage to her scales. He crawls toward the singer, asking her to stay low and asks the technicians to focus the lights on a single spot. After that, he hits the queen with more fire spells, but she continues chasing him and pins him down, landing a few deep scratches on his arms and chest. While trying to recover, the queen goes off to attack more students. The situation looks pretty dire considering his mana is almost out, and his defensive spells, with the exception of Shather Shift, are no good anymore. The queen comes back and surrounds him with her minions. Ling tells him to find a way to escape because the hunters have decided to barge in and end the infestation, even if it means losing the human hosts. This whole thing has gone out of control, and they can't risk further infections in the city. Fan Mo pleads for some more time because all these students don't deserve to die. When the hunter on the line doesn't agree, he just throws the Bluetooth away in protest. The hunter's league leader decides to grant him some more time because he, too, wants as many people to survive as possible. Fan Mo summons his best friend, the Arkwolf. At the same time, the singer calls out to him and tells him she's focused all the lights. The wolf unleashes a sand volley to push the minions back. Any monster that comes near Fan Mo is treated like his chew toy. He taunts the scale queen to come near him, backs away into the shadows, and disappears. He reemerges behind the drum set, but when the queen lunges to attack him, her claws pass through nothing. That is merely a shadow projection when he's really behind her. He casts a combined star chart fushia fire attack that completely obliterates her. Never mind, I spoke too soon. She gets up and chases him at unbelievable speed despite being completely scorched. When she's just an inch away from gashing him, he pins her with a shadow nail and electrocutes her with a massive lightning bolt. That does the trick, and the scaly queen finally perishes, revealing the innocent woman beneath the scales. The pendant on Fan Mo's neck starts glowing and levitating as it absorbs the scaly queen's warrior-level spiritual essence. The hunters finally break into the gymnasium and hunt for the scaly queen, but she's nowhere to be found. They see all the scaly beasts on the floor and some of the girls struggling to get up after recovering. 
Realizing Fan Mo has somehow defeated the Skelly Queen, the hunter's leader directs them to attend to the injury and make sure all the girls are okay. Ling finds Fan Mo lying on the floor with many grave wounds. The healing mage he had saved very early on comes and treats his minor wounds, advising him to rest until someone comes to pick him up. Once she leaves, Mannion comes to check on him. Fan Mo revisits their deal and tells him to take the credit in exchange for his promised soul thunder seat. Mannion enthusiastically runs off to get clout, leaving Ling confused. Why would Fan Mo pass up on getting recognition for such a big feat? He explains that his main motive isn't fame but to improve his skills because he needs to win the hunter's game in two years and win the winged magic tool. Eventually, a medic team puts him on a stretcher and takes him to the hospital. Once the school settles down a bit after the incident, Nujiao and her friends discuss the Skelly Queen's death. They all wonder how Mamian, a light mage, was able to pull it off. One of the girls says she heard a rumor that Fanmo is the one who actually did it. Those two are all that anybody talks about, but most don't want to believe Fanmo, the resource-stealing thief, is the one who saved them. In their dorm, Fanmo asks when he's going to get the Soul Thunder Seed. Mannion explains that magical gears like the Sound Thunder Seed are limited in number, so he plans on buying it for him in the next auction. The auction piques Fanmo's interest, and he asks if he can come along. On the auction day, they arrive in the large auditorium filled with the city's rich, esteemed mages. Fanmo is lucky to be there despite having such a humble background. He intends on selling an item to the warrior-level spirit essence he obtained from the Skelly Queen. Mannion is super impressed about this, claiming that the soul container that he's holding is the only vessel that can keep spirit essence, and it is a very rare and expensive item. Fanmo simply got the container when he asked for the pendant to extract the spirit essence. It makes him wonder what exactly this pendant is and where it came from. Once they take their seats, an annoying voice speaks up behind Fanmo. It's Sengfeng Bai, the snobbish rich hair of Bai family who is very publicly embarrassed by Fanmo at the welcome competition. He condescendingly asks what Fan Mo is doing at the auction, but Fan stares at him blankly, unable to recall who he is. He storms away, taking another humiliating L in front of his friends. Mannion successfully buys the sole thunder seed for Fan Mo with a bid of 28 million yuan. With it, Fan Mo can make his thunder talent as strong as his fushiest spirit infused fire talent. The next item is his demon level spirit essence, which greatly excites the crowd. It's a high ticket item that many bidders try to win. But in the end, Sengfeng Bai wins with a bid of 29 million yuan. He's super proud about this and goes out of his way to approach Fan Mo and tell him how he can never get his hands on such an item. Fan Mo just agrees with him to shut him up. The next item is Shield of Hell, a magical gear that not only blocks the attacks of warrior level monsters but also projects spikes that pierce the enemy. Now that he's got a lot of money from the spirit essence, he tries his hand at bidding. With the rest of his money, he rents a flat outside the campus so he can focus on training. Coincidentally, the house that he wishes to rent is the one that Nujio and her friend Tuchu also have eyes on. Tuta recommends they split the rent with him, but Nujio is hesitant to live with someone she barely knows, especially because he is close to Mannion from the Zhao family. Her friend convinces her to take it as an opportunity to lure him, a strong mage, into joining the Mu family instead. Fan Mo looks forward to a fun time with his new housemates, and at the university. He visits his sister Xingxia in Song City in the winter. She tells him how proud she is of his stellar performance at university. She shares her recent learnings of Bao City from her history classes. The city's origins can be traced back to the early 200 Ad, when the first residents were the Sacred Springs guardians sworn to protect the spring forever. However, their numbers decreased as time passed until they were completely a bygone race. She believes the truth of Black Curia's motives for the attack on Bao City can only be found inside the ancient Gudu tomb, which has long been unexplored due to the high number of malicious spirits haunting it. All Fan Mo wants is to learn the cause of the destruction of his home city and crush Black Kyria. For this, he has a long journey ahead of him.